are the vine We are the branches I can do nothing apart from you The giver of life The one to hold on to I can do nothing apart from you Hi creatives, Lauren Lisbeth here with Lauren Lisbeth Animal Art and what I do is I help take beginner and intermediate level artists to become masters of colorful acrylic pet and wildlife art. Now you may have already guessed we are starting a brand new teaching series today. We came out of the teaching series that I called Leap Beyond Technique where I went over my step-by-step -step creative system, where we learned that in order to find your style, you don't need talent, but rather to show up fully and authentically with your passion, where we take and harness those crummy and good things in our lives to tell a story in our art, which we can use to develop our technique, interpret the light in our own way, taking what we learn from color theory to create our own color palette, all of which to emerge our own personal artist style, which that theme will carry into today's new teaching series that I call Sketchbook Snacks. If you're feeling too overwhelmed or intimidated or lacking those ideas and motivation to create your own original art, you can still be very productive with small little sketches. You can still explore ideas and color palettes and concepts. You can capture ideas more quickly and it's kind of like a visual journal. It's a very private, sacred space where you can be yourself, express yourself, and still help you develop your artist style. So if you want to explore in your sketchbook with me, at the very least, all you'll need is your phone to watch the tutorials, a pencil, and your sketchbook. So today we'll be drawing this giraffe. It's a monochrome color palette here using just red color pencil, which by the way, you can erase if you press soft enough, you can erase a Prisma colored pencil. And you don't have to use red, use any color you want. Use a pen or a marker or a blue colored pencil. That's up to you. All right, so let's grab that sketchbook and your pencil and let's get drawing. All right, so I am using a very sharp Prisma colored pencil. This is crimson red, and I like to start with a plus sign, but it won't quite sit in the dead center of my page, but a little bit higher up. And as you can see, I'm just barely touching my paper. We want these beginning lines to be ever so soft. Now at the beginning, instead of stressing about perfectly curved or straight lines, we're going to utilize angles. That horizontal line will represent the area between the left and right eye. So here I'm creating an angle for the top of the left eye. These are all what I call loving guesses. Each line is our best guess, we're trying our best, and if it's not right, we try again. Now still on that horizontal line, I'm gonna do my best to create somewhat of an angle for that right eye. We wanna pencil in the focal points, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth where the viewer looks first. So just slightly down from that horizontal line on the vertical line, drawing a straight line down from there that goes off a little to the left for the snout. Now I'll just draw the angled line for the eyes, but I won't actually draw in the eyes just yet. And let's eyeball some measurements here. We're just gonna eyeball it. Coming straight down from the far left of that eye, we see the very end of that rounded snout. Eyeballing it can get us pretty close. On the end of that line, I'll create a light circle. Now drawing a line that comes straight down from the far right of the right eye, that jaw sticks out a bit more. But I wanna find its placement in relationship to where that snout is. So first I pencil in that line, the definition to the right of the snout, and below that line and angled up and to the right, I will connect that line to the one that drops from the right of the eye. 
So around there is where we'll create that curved jawline. But we can't be sure the exact definition until we get the other body parts in, like now the left side of the snout. Now this doesn't go straight up, it goes a little bit up and to the right. So in these early stages, I'm gonna try and find that line using what I call multiple guidelines, also called construction lines. It's multiple passes using a very little pressure on my pencil that are right around the same area trying to help us find that final line. Now let's apply this to the ears and use our guidelines to try and find the movement and the placement of both left and right ears. These lines represent the center of both ears and on my page that right ear and the left goes off my page. Not really intentional but if you have a larger piece of paper or you just drew smaller, then you'll be able to draw in that entire ear. Now, do you know what those horns are called on giraffes? Ossicones. Let's use guidelines to draw those in. Two sitting vertically on the forehead. That doesn't quite go off my page, but will sit higher than both ears and we'll start penciling in the curved shape, the oval around that line for the left ear. Now based on the position of the giraffe's head, that left ear is coming out from behind the ossicones and the side of that eye. So I want to try and find that curved line that connects that left eye to the ossicones. Now it's this dipped concave curved line that goes up straight into those ossicones and then I'll create kind of like a V between those vertical ossicones that connects them now many of you know who already follow my channel know that I like to use traceables. To help creatives with very little drawing or painting experience, jump straight into learning painting technique, having lots of fun, reducing stress, and getting it pretty darn close to the original. However, I don't want to scare you away from the sketchbook. It can honestly improve your paintings and your mental health if you know some simple drawing techniques that make drawing so much fun. Plus, it's very productive and helping you explore color palettes and designs, certain concepts that you want to apply to your own original art. So if you'd like to make your sketchbook time way more fun and playful, I have my very helpful sketchbook drawing system, a guide to help you draw and shade any animal with ease to emerge and develop your own style. A free download linked down below in the description. All right, so above the ossicones, I'm gonna create two symmetrical circles sitting right on top, still pressing very lightly, trying to find all those shapes first. Now, the great part about drawing is that you work on one area or make adjustments and it helps you better gauge how you need to adjust other areas. Like right here, I can slightly bring out to the right, the right side of the eye. And why does the drawing have to look photo perfect? I'm gonna bring this ear in further than it's actually showing on the reference. So I created the curved area at the bottom and then it's gonna go off my page. But this is much closer than it is in the reference. Then I'll go straight into that hairline going along the top of the neck. That line sits below the circles for the ossicones with another line that sits slightly higher than the jaw line that I curved ever so slightly off the side of my page. Then I'm gonna work on that fold for the top of the left ear. It begins about halfway down that ear, coming in towards the bottom of the ossicones. And in this upper left corner, this will be the first place we start to press a little bit harder on our pencils. These lines in this upper left corner of my sketchbook, I like and I wanna keep. I'm connecting those circles to the lower parts of the ossicones, not actually making the top of those circles flat, but rather more bumpy. Next, we'll draw in that bump on the forehead. I'm going to work on the line that's the left of the right ossicone. This line will come down to the left, 
You can utilize an angle here if you need to. And if you look, that bump doesn't sit in the middle between the eyes, it sits up higher. Now let's separate that left eye from this bump area that comes down along the snout. It's the area between this line and that bump that will be adding our darkest shading soon. But don't miss this part, I'm drawing in a slight little bump along the bridge of the nose. And at the base of that, I'll bring out that nose, not only out to the left, but also down. Now I'm gonna connect the bottom of that left eye just a little bit more to that line we just created. And I don't actually think I need to bring that bump out anymore, but I did. Just be careful that you're also stepping back and looking at your drawing in relationship to the reference photo and not just focused on my drawing. So now let's find those eyes. I'm gonna guess eyeball the eyeball on the left, draw a line from that side to the right, straight across horizontally, and right below that line on the right side, I'll draw in that right eye. Now at first, I'm gonna draw a rhombus shape. Do you guys remember what that looks like from geometry? I'm gonna round the bottom of that rhombus in the lower right corner. Now measuring things here, a line that goes down from the left side of that eye should meet with that nose. All right, once more, I'm starting to press a little harder on my pencil. And drawing that line leads me to bring out the right of the jaw. I, I know that I need to make that side larger, come out a bit more to be in proportion with the snout. So along that whole curved line, along the jaw line, I added a little bit more width there. Now let's find those nostrils. So to help me find those nostrils, I'm gonna bring a line that curves around that bump on the forehead down along the bridge of the nose. Now I'll stop that line where we created the circle for that rounded part of the snout. Definitely still use those initial shapes we made to get those measurements. That leads me to bringing out the top of that rounded area for the snout and starting at that little ditch around the bump on the bridge of the nose and where I just rounded it, is where I'll create a V where the nostrils will sit. They might sit below or above or around those lines, but this is approximately where they will be. Now, if you watch me, I'm gonna create long, thin ovals for the nostrils themselves. And we also have this curved border going along both nostrils. And we really see the side of that on the left nostril. We see more of it on the right nostril but I'm still not convinced I know exactly where these nostrils go. So I'm gonna do a few more tweaks along the bridge of the nose. Now the line I'm drawing here is the beginning of those markings. It comes down along the bridge of the nose and connects to the far left side of that right nostril. Now I tell my daughter this often who's learning how to draw, drawing is hard. Even the most experienced drawlers still get frustrated. So just keep working past that frustration and give it time. Now I just extended out just ever so slightly the top of that left eye and down from there, there's actually a very short little line which we just barely see the side of along the bridge of the nose. And I'll draw in something that's very similar. It comes along the left of that dark shadow we see that is to the left of the right eye. If you noticed right there, at an angle, that shadow comes down slightly, so I'm boxing that area in so we can add that with our shading. Next, I'm gonna find the curved lines that make up the base of that right ear. For the bottom of that right ear, it's a symmetrical curve opposite the left ear, and same with the top of that right ear. It kind of curves in towards the bottom of that right ossicone. So you can see now my lines are getting darker because I'm adding more pressure and I'm happy with those lines. I wanna keep them and see them better over top, the softer lines. Now I just wanna note this steep drop before it goes into that tall hair on the back of the giraffe's neck. And below that, about a half inch, is where I draw the base of that fur, where we start to see those markings. Now going back to those nostrils, the left nostril I'm bringing down a bit more and up to the left. We only see the side of the top of the nostril there. On the right nostril, I brought the inside of the nostril up and to the right slightly, 
which also would mean I have to lift up that border slightly too, that curved line around it. Now I want to get those eyes right so we can start to add the eyelashes. Based on the tweaks we made to the base of the right ear, I see that I can slightly extend out the top part of the right eye. So all while I'm looking at the eye, I'm also looking at the ears. That's sort of my measurement here, which is why I can see then that I need a very, very thin border around the bottom of both ears. Now for the eyelashes, you can get real creative here. They can be a little curly, they can be super long, they can be kind of short. But watch carefully, I do three different things on this left eye. An eyelash above the left eye, an eyelash below, and I create that curved little bit of skin that we missed out that connects to the top of the bridge of the nose. Now the eyelashes on the right eye are a bit more difficult to see. They're not that long. This kind of looks like a very young giraffe, and I do a little squiggly design here. But at the same time, not pressing super hard on my pencil. Again, like I said at the beginning of this video, you can erase Prisma colored pencils, especially if you press lightly in case you want to touch up your eyelashes or any other line. So we have the core foundation of our sketch. This curved line I'm adding and almost doing a little shading to on the center of the lips is one of the last few lines before we add the markings and the shading. And if you have them, pressing harder on the lines that you know you want to keep. Yes, I know I've done it so many times, but I am again gonna bring out the side of that right jaw. It's adjustment after adjustment after tweak. When it comes to drawing, it's not easy, but you'll eventually get there. With every new line that you add, it helps you understand the next one and the next one you need, just like in our paintings. One brushstroke helps you know where to place the next one. Now above both eyes, you can see I'm adding rows of curved lines. I know it looks kind of like we made the giraffe look a little angry, so don't press too hard, but these lines are giving us a bit more direction when it comes to adding the shading, which will come very soon. So in between these steps, I'm pressing on the lines I want to keep, and then I'll add a bit of fuzziness, a bit of texture that connects the bottom of the acetones to those little ovals above them. So around the bottom of both eyes, we have a little bit of skin that curves underneath both eyes. We really see that on that left eye, but I didn't draw it in yet on the right eye. So I'll do that right here with just a small little subtle curve coming down below the right eye. Now here's where we're gonna start to shade in. I'm gonna shade in that box that we made to the left of that right eye, that dark shadow. And there's different ways you can go about shading. Something I also include in my drawing system, link down below, you can do a light little scribble like I just did, or cross hatching, pencil strokes that go in opposite directions to fill in an area. Now before I add shading to this area, I'm gonna take that curved part along the left of the snout, make it more obvious. Then with a light scribble, I'm gonna shade in, doing the same angle, same direction from top down, along the left of that snout. You'll also see I'll be doing the cross hatching in a little bit, but I start soft, just like I did with the core drawing we did. And then I'll add more pressure to my pencil as I add more layers of the shading. Now, another loose way of shading in drawing is called scumbling. These are small circular pencil marks, which you can make very wide or very tiny and neat. I use a bit of that shading technique when I work on the markings, which we'll do quite soon. I'm still adding a few more lines yet. I'm going to use a line to extend the base of that right ear out behind the ossicones along the neck. I'm also going to create a very thin border around the left ear that we did on the right, just along the outer edge on the bottom. Now there's a skin fold that I missed that is gonna cause me to bring the neck down a little bit. 
and join the side of that jawline to the neck. And as I add more pressure to my pencil, I'm lifting the top of that hair up just slightly on the back of the neck. Now, if you haven't yet grasped color value, this is a great way to learn it in your sketchbook doing shading. So our light source is coming from the top right, a real strong light source, making the left side of the draft's face very dark. That's why I chose this reference because we don't actually have too many medium values. Those are the values in between our very dark values and our very light values. And what value defines is how light or dark a color or hue is. And we're just using one color. Now using the different shading techniques that I've gone over and in the drawing guide link below, we can indicate dark values by pressing harder on our pencil and or applying lines more closely together as well as dots. And on the flip side, to create lighter values, we can press very softly on our pencil and or use really large gaps between dots and lines. Also, I talk about this quite a bit in my masterclass and in my tutorials. Values create shapes. So as you're trying to find whether it's a dark or medium or light value, pay close attention to the shape it's creating. If it helps you further, you can print off a second reference photo and literally outline these different value shapes. All right, so here we go, finally adding the markings. And I will actually not be following the exact same placement and shape of the markings as the photo, but instead doing the same thing I would do in a draft painting, referencing those shapes and placement, making up my own, using some scribbles and some scumbling to fill in these markings. And that's when I noticed the separation line between the golden brown and the white area on the right side above the giraffe's right eye. Now in my own personal artist style, I seize any opportunity to get real playful and have so much fun with shape, whether I'm making values or creating markings so go ahead and use your triangles and rectangles and squares, but what are some other designs that would be so much fun for you to add? I mean, why not add a star or a heart or maybe text? Remember, this is like a visual journal where you can draw anything, write anything, express it all out. And if you really like it, you can transfer it to a canvas, turn it into a painting, but if not, you can keep it hidden, you can keep it private inside your sketchbook. And speaking of text, I'll actually be adding a little bit of text in the lower right corner when I'm nearly finished. And so I encourage you to think of something that you could write that relates to you. Now, just to add a bit of texture and also to get the darkness at the top of the hair, I'm gonna use a bit of scumbling, just a, a long row at the top. Now, if you'd like to further improve your drawing skills, and your acrylic painting skills while helping you manage stress, I have something called the Online Animal Art Masterclass. This is where I have over a hundred step-by-step real-time tutorials teaching all my drawing and painting techniques and my color methods for drawing and painting pets and wildlife in a colorful, uplifting way. And the community of creatives that are in the masterclass are the most loving, supportive, uplifting animal lovers I could ever imagine in the class. I am so grateful. So if you or a friend are creatives going through things like anxiety, depression, or addiction, this class is definitely made for you. I have a link to the masterclass down below, but guys, let's get back to our shading.
Now what I'm going to do next is take out my eraser, erase the unneeded lines. Believe me, these really will erase. And then I'm going to go over with more layers over top of the shading I've already done. I'm going to press much harder around those eyes and also shading inside the nostrils, creating a much darker value. Then I'll be adding cross hatching, which is those repeating, intersecting, crossing lines to add shading to the ears, which are getting very little light in both ears, very dark, and adding more and more layers of shading to not only get those lines closer together, but also to get them darker. Now when shading, just like when I'm painting with acrylics, I'm looking for the darkest areas, those dark values, and I'll be applying them first. Then I'll apply the medium values, which is where I add a little bit less pressure to my pencil and or a little bit wider gaps between lines, or if you're using dots, gaps between your dots. Now, like I said at the beginning, there's not too many medium values, but where we will find some, are the areas between the very dark and the very light areas. They connect those two extremes. So I see them along the snout, along the forehead and bridge the nose, and around the tops of the ossicones and to the right, and along the ears. And again, that's where we're going to be pressing a little softer on our pencils and creating a little bit wider gaps.
Next, I'll be adding more layers to those markings. I'll be creating a little bit more neater, smoother shading over top them, not to make them too dark, and also really defining their shape.
Now, of course, you don't have to add any text if you don't want to, but I am in the lower right corner going to add shaped to serve. So if you want to and you've thought of your word or phrase or sentence, what have you, let's add that now. All right, creatives, thank you so much for watching. I hope this one blessed you. If you have any questions or requests down below, leave them in the comments. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.